Good morning, Ms. Birch. Good morning. My name is Eli Metz. I'm a nurse practitioner student today. I'm going to be doing an assessment of your neck, your lungs, and your cardiac systems, okay? Okay. All right, I'm just going to begin by inspecting the skin of the neck. Okay, I'm looking and seeing that it's uh, color normal for ethnicity. Um, also that it's warm and dry. I'm looking for a turgor. You seem to have normal turgor. Um, no edema or swelling. Also no bruising, no scars, no lesions, no nevi anywhere around the neck. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to palpate your trachea. I just feel that it is midline here. It seems to be no enlargement. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is have you kind of extend your neck up for me. And I'm just feeling now for your thyroid cartilage, otherwise known as Adam Bevel. Okay. I'm going to go down below that for the cricoid cartilage. And now what I'm palpating is the isthmus of your thyroid gland. Um, to further assess that, I'm going to step behind you, okay? I'm going to put my hands around both sides here. I'm going to ask you to swallow for me, please. Okay, just feeling the movement of the thyroid gland and then moving over to the lateral lobe. I'm going to displace the uh, thyroid tissue here to one side and palpate the opposing side of the lobe of the thyroid gland. I'm going to do the same thing here on the other side. I'm going to ask you to swallow one more time. Okay, you can see the thyroid appears to not be enlarged, no signs of goiter. Symmetrical on both sides as well. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to palpate and then also take your carotid artery on both sides. I'm going to be listening for a bruit, which is an abnormal whooshing sound with the carotid artery upstroke. So I'm just going to go right anterior to the sternocleidomastoid. I can feel a strong pulsation bilaterally. Okay. And now I'm going to oscillate both the carotid arteries, okay? Okay, both sides appear to be strong and equal bilaterally, okay, with no breweries heard. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is test the range of motion of your neck. So I want you to drop your chin to your chest. Okay. We're looking for the flexion there. And then if you'll pick it up straight and just look straight ahead. Okay. That's going to be extension. And then if you'll tilt your chin upwards and look at the ceiling. All right. So we see the hyperextension is present. The next thing I'm going to do is have you turn to either side. And to this right side, please. Okay. Lateral flexion is present. And then if you can kind of roll your head toward each shoulder and now to the left. Okay, so we have the ability for both lateral flexion, the rotation was prior to that. And then I want you to do something to test cranial nerve 11. I'm going to have you shrug against my hand, shrug your shoulders up against the resistance. Okay, and then if you can turn into my hand or against the resistance. Very good. And on this side, this side. so cranial nerve 11 seems to be grossly intact. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Birch, now I'm going to begin with an assessment of your pulmonary system. Okay, we're going to start on the posterior chest of the back here, okay? okay. So what I'm looking for right now is um, just a general inspection of the skin. It seems to be free of any bruising, scars, lesions, nevi. It's warm and dry, color is appropriate for ethnicity. Seem to have good turgor, no swelling or edema, okay? And I'm also looking at the uh, anterior posterior diameter, which seems to be normal in you. Um, you're breathing easily. You have uh, no signs of um, tachypnea or increased rate of breathing, no increased effort, no nasal flaring. I see no accessory or abdominal muscle use um, and just normal positioning. Do you feel your breathing is unlabored at this time? Yeah, I feel like it's normal. normal. Okay, very good. Very good, okay. First thing I'm going to do is kind of feel all over your chest. I'm going to just sit behind you here and lightly palpate some different areas. Look for, for any deformities or asymmetry. Also feeling for um, crepitus, which would be a signal that there's air trapped in the tissue or underneath the tissue. Kind of feel here. Okay. All right. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to squeeze together here on your side. Then I want you to take a deep breath in. And again. And out. Okay. I'm just looking for symmetrical and uh, normal chest expansion when I'm doing that. Okay. I'm now going to palpate um, for tactile fremitus using either the ball or the owner, owner surface of my hand. I want you to repeat the words 99 whenever I touch you with my hand, okay? 99. Uh-huh, again. 99. Okay, again. 99. Again. 99. 99. Okay. 99. 99. Again. 99. And again. 99. Very good. Okay, now I'm going to allow you to tap or percuss on your intercostal spaces between your ribs, okay? I'm just listening for normal resonant sounds. We're making sure we don't have any dullness or hyper resonance, okay? So I'm just gonna tap, nothing for you to do here. Just stay seated upright there. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to breathe out and hold that out breath. So just expel all the air from your lungs for me. Okay. Now I want you to take a deep breath in. Okay, very good. And breathe out for me all the way out. And then take a deep breath in and hold it. Okay, very good. What I'm looking for there is a, just an appropriate expansion of the lungs and noticing the difference from when the diaphragm uh, rises during expiration and then drops again, allowing for the lung expansion during inspiration. Normal finding there about, you know, four to five centimeters, okay, of expansion. <clears throat> now what I'm gonna do is listen to my stethoscope over all your lung fields, okay? So whenever I touch my stethoscope to your back, I just want you to take a nice, slow, deep breath in and then back out each time I touch you with my stethoscope, okay? Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try here. Again. 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 Okay, I'm able to hear the bronchial breath sounds here near the vertebral column. I'm going to move outward or lateral just a little bit between the vertebral column and the scapula. I'm going to be listening for uh, uh, vesicular breath sounds now. I was hearing bronchial before, closer to the midline. So if you can breathe in again. Again. Nice, slow, and deep. Again. Again. Very good. Again. Again. Moving a little laterally here to catch this lower load. Okay. Again. Okay. There's an oscillate vesicular lung sounds in all these fields. Um, no adventitious or extra sound, no wheezes, no crackles, no ronchi, no rolls. Okay, so all normal expected findings. Okay, one thing we need to do before we switch to the front chest or anterior chest, I'm going to palpate for costovertebral angle tenderness right here in this region, okay? It's going to be up underneath your last rib. I'm just going to give a little pressure here. Tell me if this is tender. No. Okay. No. Okay, good. Very good. Normal expected bite. 
Okay, Ms. Birch, now we're going to assess the pulmonary system from the front or the anterior chest, okay? Okay. So again, I'm just going to do a general skin inspection while I palpate here. Color is normal for ethnicity. Skin is warm and dry. Good skin turgor. No edema or swelling. No bruising, no scars. No nevi, no lesions noted, okay? All normal findings. Again, I'm just gonna also I'm palpating for any deformities, looking for symmetry and making sure there's no, nothing abnormal on the surface of the skin. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing we did last time. I'm gonna come here under your rib cage. I'm gonna gather up these little bit of loose skin and have my fingers together. I'm gonna ask you to take a deep breath in and then out. Okay, normal symmetrical chest expansion there. Um, I'm going to do the same thing we did on the back as well. I'm going to do the percussion for the tactile phimitis, okay, in the intercostal spaces. You may have to slightly displace some of your breast tissue as we're doing this exam on the anterior chest, okay. And just like we did on the uh, back, I'm going to listen to your lung sounds now. Start a little higher, kind of on the side here. I'm just going to listen. Slow deep breaths in. What I'm listening for here is actually bronchial or tracheal breath sounds. As I move down closer to the sternal border, slow deep breath in. And I can hear the change to more of a bronchovesicular sound. Over essentially where your main stem bronchi are located. Where the trachea bifurcates to go into either lung. Then as we move down onto the lung fields, I hear bronchovesicular or vesicular breath sounds, excuse me. All normal expected findings. Again. Moving more laterally now over the lower lung fields, the lower lobes on the left, middle lobe on the right. Again, again. Lungs are clear and equal bilaterally. No adventitious or extra sounds, no wheezes, no crackles, no ronchi or rawls, okay? Very good, all normal expected findings. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Birch, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to listen to your heart sounds, okay, while you're in the seated position. So you can just stay just as you are. I'm gonna feel for your intercostal spaces First, locate the sternal angle and identify your second rib. Move down to the second ICS or intercostal space at the right sternal border. I'm going to also take the at the aortic point. Okay. To the opposite side of the sternum, also at the second intercostal space. I'm going to listen for the pulmonic heart sounds. Going to move down here to Herb's Point, third intercostal, left sternal border. We're going to switch to the bell of the diaphragm. Perfect. And I'm going to go down to the fourth and listen for the tricuspid valve. Very likely going to have to come underneath your bra here. 
Okay, with the bell. Perfect. Okay. Before I also take the apex of the heart or the point of maximal impulse, I'm going to try to palpate it first, okay? I'm just going to some press pressure here. It's normally found at the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line. I'm able to feel it there gently tapping against my index finger, so I'll go down to one finger. Okay, very good. I'm going to listen to it for a full minute, and I'm going to count the rate of your heartbeat. And I'm also going to listen and see if I can hear anything that would be indicative of an abnormal rhythm. Let me find it with my stethoscope. Okay, there it is. We'll begin counting now. Okay, so your apical rate is 64 beats a minute, okay, with no abnormalities in the pulse being able to be oscillated, okay? Okay, Ms. Burst, now we're going to just repeat some of the same things we did with you sitting while you're lying supine, okay? So I'm just looking, generally inspecting for any heaves or lifts, um, of which I see none. I'm now going to palpate for any thrills over the oscillation points that we listened to when you were sitting, okay? still feel the uh, apex of the heart, the PMI, but I'm not able to palpate any thrills at this time with any of those oscillation points. Okay, now I'm just going to listen again while you're lying to the five areas we listened to before. Aortic and then the pulmonic. Herbs point. I'm going to switch to the bell and move down here to the tricuspid. And right here to the apex. And the mitral bell. Okay. Very good. Now what I'm doing is I'm just looking for... Um, any jugular venous distension, of which I see none. You're approximately 30 degrees right now with your head inclined. Um, I do see the undulation or the pulsation there. I can see the carotid, I can feel the carotid, and I can actually see the undulation of the uh, internal jugular vein. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to do an estimation of that jugular venous pressure. So I'm gonna first feel for your sternal angle here. Flipping my little ruler around to where I can have the centimeters up. Okay, I'm gonna try to place that at a 90 degree angle. And I'm gonna put the bottom of this index card at the meniscus or the highest point of that internal jugular vein undulation. And try to get it lined up at a nice right angle. And it's approximately two centimeters. So we add about three or four to that and it's an estimation of the pressure of your right atrium. So that's a normal finding, okay? 